Victoria's health system is the major winner out of this budget, with $12 billion in spending over the next four years. Some of that will pay for 400 more triple zero call centre workers and a plan to tackle the state's elective surgery waiting list. It also includes the cash to build the Melton Hospital in Melbourne's west and an expanded women's and children's hospital in Geelong. Overall, there'll be around 7,000 more health workers hired, including 1,500 in mental health. The pandemic's not over, so there's $4.2 billion set aside for rapid tests and other COVID-19 measures. The state's education sector is also a winner, with $1.8 billion set aside to help build 13 new schools and upgrade every special school in the state. There's also money to bring in nearly 2,000 more teachers and a bump in funding for kindergartens. The government has also found $2.6 billion to get the regions ready to host the Commonwealth Games in 2026. And there's a massive injection for road maintenance and funds for more V-Line trains. The budget does provide for 500 more police officers and 50 protective services officers over the next two years. But it's less than the 1,500 officers the police union wants to see over the next four. And while there are lots of new jobs in the public service, workers hoping for a pay rise might be disappointed. Wages will be capped at 1.5 per cent this year. It's less than inflation, so effectively it's a real wages cut. Although the Treasurer has flagged, it could be reviewed. There's also a 1.75% cap on local council rate hikes. That might sound good to ratepayers, but a lot of councils say it'll make it harder to deliver services. The casino will also be asked to help with the budget repair. There'll be higher taxes on its pokies, expected to bring in at least $30 million a year. On the other hand, the government will spend nearly $60 million to act on the recommendations from a royal commission into the casino's behaviour. And anyone thinking of selling a property soon might not like to hear the budget's predicting a 4% drop in prices in the coming months. It's expected to hit high value parts of the market hardest before recovering after that. Social and affordable housing is getting some attention, with $1 billion being made available in low interest loans to help community housing agencies build up to 6,000 more homes. And in case you hadn't realised it was an election year, the government's offering a $250 one-off payment for households. To get it, you have to log on to the government's energy comparison website designed to help people find the best deal. But the state will be piling on debt to make the big investment. So debt will keep climbing over the next few years to surpass $167 billion by 2026. The Treasurer Tim Pallas argues a post-pandemic bump in the economy is likely to continue, helping the state grow its way forwards. And the government hopes to turn a $17.6 billion deficit into a slender $650 million surplus by 2026.